what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see ya. What is up? Oh my goodness, Neo Gideo, Scarecrow, Straight Jackin, AGK Mark, DM Cades, Elf, how are you? Good to see you. It's not, it's not a loop. I can do it at any time. I have the power. If I ever get bored during a stream, I can just like click a couple buttons, go over here, click this, click this, and then all of a sudden, hey! <laughs> oh, it would be a... <laughs> It would be a sweet screensaver. Someday I'm going to do it all stream. Someday I'm just going to bounce around throughout the entire stream. But I'm not going to... I'm just not going to say anything about it. I'm going to act like it's completely... Like it's completely normal. <laughs> so how's everyone doing today? I'm excited. Today is a... Today is a historic day. I'm not going to... I'm not going to do it today though. <laughs> This seems, this seems, uh, it seems annoying. I, I would get annoyed, I think, if someone did that an entire stream. <laughs> so how is everyone today? Hey, thank you, Lawson. Good to see you, good to see you. So today, it's Historic Day. We have not one, but two sweet Historic Dykes to check out, and, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I wonder if it'd be possible to actually have a screensaver of that. I'll have to look into it. I don't know, I don't know how we'd make that happen. I is it possible to make your own screensaver? If so, I will try to make a screensaver for you. <laughs> Uh, so what do we got today? Deck number one, we are going to do some Citadeling. Uh, I don't know if we've, I mean, we've probably played it at some point in the past. I don't know if we've ever played Historic Citadel. Uh, and this deck looks really fun. It's an adapted version of one that someone played in a tournament recently. Uh, I think they did okay, but not great with it. But basically, we're trying to play Bullets of Citadel. Then we're trying to make a bunch of extra land drops and turn our lands into swamps with Dryad and then drain our opponent with Dread Presence. And that's essentially the deck. Find Bullets of Citadel. It's all about the Bullets of Citadel. Deck number two is another... <laughs> Another deck uh, featuring a Historic Anthology card. It's one of the ones we haven't played yet, which is Santa's Demolager. So I don't know if any of you watched the uh, the Hooglandia Open this weekend, but I was watching it uh, a little bit, and someone popped up on screen, Sawtus demolishing their opponent's lands. And I dug around, I found the deck list, so it's kind of like a weird mutate deck, where uh, Sawtus Demolisher is like a repeatable version of, uh, of a Beast Within. And we can potentially mutate onto something, and then keep mutating, and blow up all of our opponent's lands, and then figure out how to deal with the 3-3s. Three I kind of I think Maelstrom Pulse or something would be cute. It would be cute to be able to blow up all your opponent's lands and then blow up all the beasts, but still, we are we might give some Santos Demolishing uh, a shot as well. But we're starting with Bolus' Citadel. That is deck number one. Cold Shoulders and Arpoofs. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then who knows? Maybe we play something else. Maybe we bounce around. Uh, we're going to have fun with it today, though. It is a fun, historic day. And if you got sweet lists to look at, I love looking at your list as well. So that is the overview of today. Uh, so I guess we do our reminders. I don't think there's any big magic news uh, at all since we since we streamed yesterday. No new spoilers. How is everyone feeling about uh, our streak saving stuff on day two? You've had a day to have it sink in. How are we feeling about Professor Onyx? How are we feeling about Kizmina? I believe I believe people are buying out Chain of Smog. Uh, yep. So Chain of Chain of Spog. Uh, I'm not sure why people are so excited about this. Target player discards two cards from his or her hand. That player may copy this spell and choose new targets for the copy. I I don't get it. I don't understand why why people are buying this out from fifty cents to twenty dollars in the last day. As far as I could tell, the plan is to play it with Professor Onyx. I guess uh, I don't even know. I guess it's because you can copy it, so you can like uh. Oh, that's, I was, okay, I was focused on the wrong part. That's a magecraft thing. Okay, that makes sense. I was focused on the, the ultimate, where I thought you were like, you're going to target your opponent and mine rot them, and then what are you, like, hoping they're going to target you, and then you can do it again, and then ultimate Liliana? That plan did not make much sense. Targeting yourself to trigger magecraft an infinite number of times. I was too focused on the ultimate, I think. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, I, the difference, I think, with Raul Zarek is Raul 
else is it? So I, no one's going to be doing this in Constructed. There's not going to be a legacy Chain of Smog Professor Onyx deck, but in Commander, where color identity is relevant, okay, that makes sense now. I still don't think, I still think it's going to cost, uh, cost that much. You don't need more than one Pharrell, do you? Uh, Raul, what is it? Storm Conduit? I think the same combo should work, uh, if it works with Liliana, because the ability is the same. Whenever you cast or copy instant or sorcery, one damage to opponent or planeswalker. Yeah, so you would be able to infinitely target yourself and do that, but, uh, does it actually, does it actually work? We'll see. Should have watched Tomer's video about it. Ooh, I actually... <laughs> I actually didn't even know Tomer did a video about it. I missed that one completely. Well, that's a that's interesting though. Okay, that makes that makes some amount of sense. Twenty dollars amount of sense. I don't know about that, but I can see I can see playing that if you're playing Liliana. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Gonna be a fun commander card. But anyway, I guess we do our reminders, and then we can talk about what we want out of Strixhaven, music, movies breakfast whatever we can we'll have some fun and uh and chat about stuff as we go along and try to bowl us to citadel some people so reminders replay youtube this we'd fight all the old streams including this one in the future normal youtube uh youtube spoiler video number one went up yesterday talking about the new planeswalkers and then today there's some crim action tomorrow we are collectively conjuring on against the odds then we have spoiler season kicking off on thursday so tons of stuff going up on the youtube a reminder that our sponsor today, like usual, is the ever awesome Card Kingdom. And uh, maybe you need some Times Power Remastered or Pawn of Ulamog. I don't know why Pawn of Ulamog is always on this hot list, but uh, maybe you need some magic cards. You get them at CardKingdom.com. Even get a free Scoop Soldier sticker. Let them know you want one in your order notes and they will hook you up. So thank you to Card Kingdom for supporting the show. Otherwise, ooh, sad news bears. Handing out the gift subs. Five of them. Thank you so much. Going to Lowly Noon, Jay. K. Torberg, Six Alpha Strike uh, Oreo, and Estmeria Raven. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscriptions and to Sad News Bears for the gift subs. Big scoop cheer for you. What's up, BD Sales? Good to see you. Good to see ya. Otherwise, merch page, tokens, t-shirts, play bets, good way to support the stream and the channel and the site. Donations always appreciated, never required. $2 or more gets your message read on stream. So let's talk Bolus is in it now. Oh man. Hella Missell handing out a gift sub to kid741 welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you thank you everyone for handing out the gift subs today uh kokon again on h oh wait we played on stream recently or was it an actual video ah so collected conjuring we played in historic on stream uh it won the against the odds poll in modern. So we are modern collected conjuring for against the odds uh, on Wednesday, which is it's a bit different. There's uh, some stuff you have in modern that you don't have access to in historic. So kind of powered up modern version of it. Uh, everyone not to get deeply divisive or political, but time to ask chat the hard questions. Pancake, waffles, or French toast? Not which do you like, but which is... <laughs> <laughs> Which is best? It's French toast for the your information. Uh, hmm. So those are all good. Those are all good. Oh, chocolate chip pancakes. Man, I never like chocolate chip pancakes. <laughs> I have a thing about my foods being mixed together, I guess. Because when I was growing up, my mom would always make chocolate chip pancakes. And I think like... 90% of the people in my family like them, but I was the one that would be like, nope, make, make me plain, make me plain ones. I do not want, I do not want chocolate in my pancake. Even though chocolate is good and pancakes are good, you put them together, it's like, it's like milk on cereal. It really is. It, it is the same philosophy. But if I was going to, uh, to rank those, I like basically every breakfast food. I'm really picky, I guess, apparently, when it comes to other foods. But I don't know if you could name a breakfast food, at least a common one, that I dislike. I like every breakfast food. So those are all things that I like. But French toast tier one. French toast number one. I honestly have never really figured out the difference between pancakes and waffles. Aren't they, like, the same, essentially the same? The same batter? They're just, like, cooked in a slightly different shape? I really think it, I really think they are. They're both fine. I guess I would choose pancakes over waffles if I had to if I had to choose, but <laughs> thoughts on scrapple. Wait, I I it must be a it must be a Albany expression. <laughs> I I've never heard of scrapple. I've heard of steamed hams, but uh, but not scrapple. <laughs> what what is scrapple? 
<laughs> uh, anyway, all right, let's let's talk about the let's talk about this deck. <laughs> So what are we doing with this deck? One thing. We are hoping to find Bolas' Citadel. If we find Bolas' Citadel, things can be really, really sweet. Bolas' Citadel lets us play spell off to the top of our library for life. The problem is you get fizzled by lands. Well, good news is we have extra land drops in Wayward Swordtooth, extra land drops in Dryad of the Ilsen Grove, extra land drops in Azusa, Maze Mind Tome for scrying lands out of the way, and a decent chunk of our lands are MDFCs, Tangle Floral Hedron, Palaka Perdation, Belligan Recovery, Hagra's Mauling. So those are lands, quote-unquote, that we can play with our Bolas' Citadel. So how do we actually win the game with the deck? And the idea is we will make enough land drops that we will be able to drain our opponent out of the game with Dre's Presence. Like, that is the entire goal of the deck. Our deck is not good at attacking. We can also use Bolas' Citadel if we get enough stuff on the battlefield. We're not good at attacking, though. Instead, we're like Golgari Bolas' Citadel burn, essentially. Not getting in there with their creatures, draining our opponent out. Uh, Sideboard-wise, Thought Seizes, of course, Graveyard Hate, a bunch of different removals, some Sweepers, some Palaka Herbs, which is kind of free with Citadel, and Ulamog, which is very much not free, but eh, maybe we ramp into it. So that's Citadel. That is that is the plan. Yeah, I could see more updates uh, to this deck. The main changes I made... Uh, there were like 35 lands or something absurd. There were so many MDFCs. So I trimmed back a little bit on MDFCs and added in more Castle Lockwades, which I think from playing just a couple test games with the deck, the issue with the deck is we got to have Bolas' Citadel. If we don't have Bolas' Citadel, things are really sad. Ooh, Oracle does sound sweet. Oracle, Oracle does sound good. Hmm. Hmm. If we don't have Bolas' Citadel, things are really sad. Maybe we can go down to MDFC. Maybe we can go down a... Swordtooth isn't that great. What else can we cut? Man, we probably shouldn't trim too much removal. Hmm. All right, we'll go one. Let's go one Oracle for now. Although even more is probably bettered. Have you considered M20 with Rada? Yeah, Rada would be sweet. The problem with Rada is it's in the wrong colors. And Bolas the Citadel wants a lot of black mana. So it would make our mana base a lot more painful to be able to cast Rada. So I'm not sure it's worth it. But let's try a game with it like this. And then we will... We can always update it as we go along. Uh, Festival on the Edge. Ooh. Got the, got the card. Oh, that's a banner mod. Why is there a Panharmonic on here? Do they ban enough stuff to make Panharmonic on good? Is that is that what this image is telling me? I don't even know what's banned in this. They don't even have a list of historic... Oh, wait. There we go. What did they ban in Historic Shakeup? Cards banned in week... T I don't even know what week this is. March 19th through 26. All right, so... Eh. Mm, that might be enough. That might be enough to make... <laughs> Panharmonic got good. Maybe. <laughs> you got me, wizard. You got me to click. Oh, uh, I I was recording some standard this morning. Oh my goodness. Did you see the arena list? Did you see the arena list that were published? Uh our meme and dream list? Oh my goodness. Uh <laughs> we got we got a good meme or dream for this week that I'm excited about. And it's not I've kind of realized with meme or dream, I actually feel like the really, 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 really bad decks might be worse for the series than, like, bad but somewhat functional decks. We'll still play the really, really, really bad ones when they come along, but I've kind of moved away from, I think, from doing the absolute, like, worst possible deck to decks that are, like, janky and weird and unique, but also maybe a little bit functional, and I think, I think that's where our deck this week falls. I, I mean, when you see... <laughs> When you see a uh, a Colossal Plow showing up in a 6-0 list, apparently, how can you not play the Colossal Plow list? <laughs> Although I still I still will admit I have a I have a hard time not giggling every time I everything you say everything you say when Colossal Plow comes into play it just sounds so dirty. Even if you're not trying to make it dirty, like it it just happens. There's not really anything you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so we got a sweet Beaver Dream deck from uh from the arena list. <laughs> uh play a land, ooh boy. Alright, Temple of Plenty, I would guess an Aura's deck of some kind. This hand's pretty good though. We can play Sword Tooth. 
into fabled passages, and then we're potentially a turn away from Bolas's Citadel. Bolas's Citadel hitting the battlefield at 20 life is... That is the dream. Blood Chief Thirst. So we'll play the land. Wayward Swordtooth. Fabled Passage. Pass the turn. All we gotta do... All we gotta do is find a land. And we get Bolas's Citadel at 20 life, and... Who knows? Who knows what amazing things could happen? Isn't there a semi-legitimate Colossal Plow deck? Uh... I mean, I have not seen one. <laughs> the Memer Dream deck list... So the card pool for... For Meme or Dream, if you go to magic.gg, the one of the wizard sites, and you go to deck lists, they are all taken either from... Uh, they publish once a week, traditional, historic, traditional, standard. So if you go browse through those, that is that is the pool that I take Meme or Dream decks out of. But like I said, I've been kind of moving away from doing like Ashiok Planewalker deck every week and trying to do more, more interesting things. Well, here we go. We untap, we draw the land, which we wanted. We crack Fabled Passage, which we don't really want to be cracking, but still. I mean, we're going to get down the Citadel. Yoda Man for the 35th month. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Fabled Passage. Crack it. Get a Swamp. Pathway on green. Citadel. All right, land on top. Uh, let's scry it to the bottom. Ooh, dry it is good. Floral hedron, swamp, explore, explore, castle lockway. Ooh. Do we keep going or do we stop? I guess another one is good in case they... Okay. Another one is good in case our opponent can answer the first one. So we'll just wait. We'll be patient. I like having a second one around because they could play like Elspeth Conquers Death or who knows and kill this one and then we can just reassemble next turn and, uh, and go back at it with tons of land drops. Nis okay. That is fine. Sure, sure, sure. Bring it, Nissa. We actually do not care about your Nissa. Opponent passes. So. We just need the life gain now. Land tapped. There's Red Presence. Yes, yes. Down to seven. Maze Mind's Tome. Pathway on green. Oh no. Hit your planes. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, scry. Away bolus is citadel number three. Overgrown tomb. <gasps> well, we're going to get all of them out of the way. Kill your planes. Scry away the bolus is citadel. Uh, Oracle. Pathway on green. Hit ya. Dread Presence over. Wait. Oh no, we're out. Okay. Well, kill Nissa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well. <laughs> Smack you for a bunch. I mean, I don't think they kill us. Like, we killed the Nissa, we killed the land. I mean, the deck does... Oh, Pony scoops it up! Tried to Nissa us! Tried to Nissa us! <laughs> ah, that was so good. Uh... Selesnia so Plow by... JSP March Season Rank. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I personally, I would not consider that a, I, I don't know if I would consider that a, a plow. I mean, I guess it has plow in it, but I don't know. I've come to believe 
that if your deck has Edge Walling Keeper and like three or four different adventure creatures, you're an adventure deck. It doesn't, it honestly doesn't really matter what you put in the rest of the slots of your deck. If your deck is adventures, great henges, and the other stuff, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would consider that. It does have plow in it, though. But it's definitely... It's adventures. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was thinking about doing an April Fool's article that I think would be kind of funny. That would be... <laughs> that would be a, like a standard brewing template. Which is just like four Edge Walling Keeper, four Love Struck Beast, four Bone Crusher Giants, four Giant Killers, let's say. Something like that. Maybe maybe Brazen Borrower. And then and then you just fill in the blanks. <laughs> kind of like a mad lib. You get to write in Colossal Plow. You get to write in Showdown of the Scald. You get to write in you get to write in whatever you want in the in the gaps. And you probably get a functional deck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rally Golem is uh, is sweet. And it does have the ox. So there is there is commitment. There is commitment to the plan. There is there is oxen in the deck, which is important. Ugh. Alright. Trim trim. Trim. Bring in the thought seizes. Run it like that. <laughs> uh. Like the old legacy blue deck maker before the bads. Yeah, ex exactly. Like that for standard. <laughs> no, I mean it is a it is a sweet. It is sweet. And I mean, who am I to judge? Like that is a way to make Colossal Plow work. Like if your goal is to play Colossal Plow and win, playing a bunch of adventure cards is probably one of the one of the better ways to go about it, I would say. Hmm. Interesting. So, we, oh, how long can we wait before he thought sees? Ooh, tireless Pilgrim! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Hey, what's up, Zealous Star? How are you? Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's just thought sees. Oh, golly. Um. Huh. A lot of planeswalkers. Alright, well, take the removal and I guess we'll we'll figure out how to deal with these planeswalkers eventually. <sighs> Maze Mindstone, go. Oh, boot it. Yeah, unfortunately our opponent had like three things that we wanted to uh that we wanted to thought seize. <laughs> we needed a chain of smog. <laughs> if only we had a chain of smog. And eh, we'll keep that. That lets us get down our our dryad at least. What do you think about Magic Legends? I mentioned this on Twitter, so I haven't actually I haven't actually played it. My issue with all those games is not that those games oh, they get another one. My issue with all those games is not that those games are bad, but that I really like magic. Like that's that is the problem with with all those games is it's like okay, I could I could sit down and I could play a magic Diablo clone or conversely, I could sit down and I could play magic, which I know I love and is my favorite game and I would argue the best game of all time. Uh, so why why would I choose to play like a magic version of Diablo or whatever when I could just play the greatest game of all time? Why would it happen? <laughs> so I'm sure it's fun and I hope people enjoy it, but that's kind of the decision I always I always have to make when it comes to these other games. Like why would I why would I choose to play a lesser game when I could just play the real deal? Oh, play Dread Presence. Play Fabled Passage. Hit to Fairy. Crack Fabled Passage. Get 
get a forest hit to fairy. Florohedron, Zoltrad Zorin. So the fairy loots. Down to one. Land. Kill the fairy. Hit Narset. I mean, we're that's not gonna necessarily win us the game, but we know with two planeswalkers with that little uh, that little synergy. Zoltan Zorin, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I saw the pre-built night deck, but we just played Circle of Loyalty. So because we just played Circle of Loyalty, I uh I figured that we probably didn't want to just run it back and do it again. Opponent. All right. Well, can we find... I mean, if we can find a Bolus of Citadel here, we could just win again. Forest Bottom. Not a Citadel. Scry. Citadel, 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 Citadel. Over onto Bottom. Oh! Main phase. Citadel. Binding. Kill it. Explore. Oh, we found it! Here we go. Here we go. Off to the races. Explore. Floral Hedrid is a creature. Dread Presence number two. Palaka Predation is a spell. Take Gideon. Binding the old gods with no target. Thought sees you. Take that. Tangled floral hedron. Trigger, trigger. Hit ya. Hit ya. <laughs> Castle Art Veil down. Gates of Life. Let's thought seize some more. Take Heliod's intervention. Ooh. I wish we had a land. Alright, maybe we just stop there. Hit our opponent. Like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Cultivate? You're going to cultivate? <laughs> we didn't hit many lands. Opponent finds a Narset. Sure. <laughs> ah! And then the bindings trigger and they get lands. And then those lands drain. I mean, it's game. It's game. We got them. Sure. Nice to fairy. Well, binding the old god. We will get a forest. Tapped. And dead. Oh, that was good. That was really good. Which format do you think is stronger? Pioneer or historic? Ooh. Um, they are... Hmm. They're pretty comparable. I might say that I might say that it's historic though. I mean, when it works, it really works. Uh, when we don't find Citadel, it is a lot sketchier. But when we have Citadel going, we can really do some things with this deck. I, what do you think, Chat? I would say that I think historic is stronger because of anthologies. Oh yeah, it's about time for a hair down stream, isn't it? We're about due. We're about due for a hair down stream. Yeah, New Liliana would work well with Citadel. The plus one changes the top of the deck. Uh, casting much spells, get to get to Magecraft. I don't know about Magecraft. As far as a name, like the ability is fine. I don't know the mechanic name Magecraft doesn't really speak to me though. Like prowess, it's very similar to prowess. Why, I mean, prowess, though, is, like, simple and makes a lot of sense. Magecraft. I'm not really sure where is that name coming from. What's, what's the justification for magecraft? I mean, not to, I mean, it's a silly thing to complain about. It's not, like, it some huge deal or anything, but it's kind of like spellcraft. Okay, I guess I, guess I could see that. It's like Spellcraft, but they already use Spellcraft. <laughs> oh, opponent. Well, you got two elves. We have two Blood Chiefs. There's... 
Uh, tap, land, go. About it. Come on, no more elves. No more elves. We got the city. Ooh, opponent draws a land. Is our opponent playing Citadel? Bond of Flourishing is a card that I normally think of as being in Citadel decks. Ooh, Conclave Tribunal. Well, I guess that means we just gotta win all in one turn. Land Maze Mines Tome. Go. Opponent uh, taps. I think a historic is stronger format because the instant man potential for problematic cards. I still want pioneer and modern decks. Oh, I think modern, I would say modern is more powerful than historic. If I was going to rank them, it would be modern, historic, pioneer, just as far as power level. Because pioneer doesn't have Muxus's, it doesn't have quite a few cards that are really strong in, a, in historic and just in a vacuum. Although modern does have most of them. Well, all right. Sure, we'll keep a land. Play the land. Oracle. Land tapped. Pass the turn. One land away from Citadel. One land away from Glory. Opponent. Land untapped. Militia Bugler. Oh, I feel like we might be playing a slightly different game than our opponent. Just just a bit. Just a bit different than what our opponent's doing. <laughs> oh, this might be a turn. Can we find the untapped land? Scry. Binding. Bottom. Okay, we get one more shot. Oh, MDF Seed. MDF Seed. Well, okay. So we get to mauling the bugler somehow for three mana which i don't think i've ever had happen before floral hedron maze mines tome all right well i guess next turn's gonna be the turn then pass the turn his oh fraxian tower is busted i could see i could see playing a tutor Ooh, thrashy okay Huh. So now we gotta kill that first. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we do. Binding of the old gods. If we play Citadel, our opponent's just going to kill it before we get to do anything with it. I don't mind having a second. I don't mind having a second Citadel. They should have blown up this one, I think. The one that will not be around for a whole bunch of turns. Uh, play the land on black. Play the land on black. Hit ya. Oh, we're in business next turn. We are in business next turn. Back to basics in historic. Oh, maybe this deck does want more oracles. Oracle does seem good. Opponent, more land wars. Uh huh. Bond of Fleur. So many Bond of Flourishings. Yeah, they definitely should have killed the Maze Mine Stone that has a bunch of activations. I feel like Back to Basics would be would be a little bit busted, perhaps. All right, draw a card. Well, let's have some fun. Get an Overgrown Tomb. Bolus is Citadel. Maze Mine Stone. Hmm. Let's scry. Well, yeah. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Land of War Helms just cannot catch a break. Radiant Fountain. Floral Hedron as a creature. Wounded. S oh, Azusa 2. And how about a Sword Tooth? And many land drops play a forest with bull. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. That's a fetch land. Fabled passage. Oh, got them. <laughs> got them. We have a new donation from. Oh, my goodness. That was spectacular. From Wounded Satellite. $2 donation. Hey, Seth. I know I mentioned it before the stream, but MTG Finance. 
podcast got me thinking I'm considering buying a few hundred world trees. What would your concerns be? And do you think it is a really safe bet? Oh, so, is it a really safe bet? Here's the problem with speculating on magic cards. Uh, and, and the reason, let me, let me, let's have a little story time. Let's have a tiny bit of story time. If you've been around for a long time, you might already know this story. So I, I've talked before how I'm not a big, I'm not a big speculator. And there's multiple reasons for that. One is, uh, especially when budget magic was like, uh, spiking card prices I just wanted to stay away from anything that could possibly look unethical because people would always be like oh like how do we know you're not like buying out these cards and then making a budget magic to try to make the price go up which is, is a ridiculous idea anyway but I want to stay really far away from that but my one foray into speculation was Crucible of the Spirit Dragons. So, Fate Reforged came out. We knew the next set was going to be called Dragons of Turkir. Dragons of Turkir! How would we possibly not get a ton of sweet dragons that would want you to have this five-color fixing land when we are getting a set called Dragons of Tarkir? So I bought, like, 50 copies of Crucible of the Spirit Dragon. I think it was actually 44. And then uh, they printed Haven of the Spirit Dragon, in the next set, which was Crucible, but better in essentially every possible way. And uh, uh, it never went up in price, even a little bit. And that was that. <laughs> that was that was the whole story. So, uh, so yes, there's always, always, always risk when it comes to speculation on Magic cards. The biggest risk when it comes to Magic card speculation is honestly reprinting. And I think that is by far the biggest risk with the World Tree uh, and and with any new card. So the World Tree, how much is the World Tree right now? The World Tree is $5. Based on the amount of play it will see in five color commander decks, it could go up in price for sure. The problem is it's a $5 rare. What if Wizards prints Commander Legends 2? And this just throws it in the set because there's a five color archetype. Or what if there's a five color commander deck? And the wizard is like, huh, that's good mana fixing. Might as well throw that in the commander deck. And then all of a sudden, it's going to not go up as much in price. I think for mythics, mythics can overcome a reprinting a little bit easier because then they're usually reprinted at mythic. Uh, but with rares, the supply is already pretty high. If they get reprinted again at rare, uh, it might. It could go wrong. So while I think that if World Tree doesn't get reprinted, I think it's a card that will go up in price and it'll be worth more than it is today. There's always a chance that it gets reprinted, and that's why that's why there is always always risk when it comes to speculating on magic cards. It could be in a challenge. Yeah, you, that you just never know. And the thing is, like, we want wizards to reprint cards. So that's kind of the other reason I feel weird speculating on magic cards is because when it comes down to it, like, I want wizards to reprint cards. I want World Tree to be cheap. So, like, speculating on cards like that, it kind of makes me feel like I'm betting against my own self-interest. I don't know. If, if you've ever, like, betted on sports or anything, it's very difficult to bet for or against a team you're a fan of. I think the easiest thing to do is just completely avoid betting on a team that you're a fan of because uh, because when it comes down to it, you're like emotionally involved. So it is real, the most money I lose, and I don't bet a ton of money on sports. I just do it as like a little hobby once in a while. But the my most losses come from like Buffalo or Syracuse teams that I actively like because <laughs> because I have an interest in them winning, and it's and it skews my it skews my perspective. I think it's the same way with Magic cards. I want them to reprint Magic cards so they're cheaper and more accessible, so more people can uh, can take advantage of them. So that further like clouds my clouds my vision when it comes to stuff like that so now my general rules i just don't bet on if i if i bet on sports at all i just don't bet on teams i like <laughs> because because i i've learned that's one of the lessons i learned that uh that it's just too easy to hmm yeah let's play azusa it's just too easy to uh to make bad decisions when you're invested. 
So yes, I think it's a, a good card with long-term potential, but there's always risk. Uh, at the same time, I don't actually think that buying 50 copies or even 500 copies of a card like the World Tree is is something that actively makes the game worse for people. When it comes to cards that are like in print, I'm not as I'm not as concerned about. Mm hmm. I guess we just pass and see what our opponent does. This gains us a life. We just need lands. Like, if we can just hit lands, we got the Citadel. But yeah, with imprint cards, I think with a older reserve list card, if you're going to buy 50 or 100 copies or 500 copies, you could definitely make it less accessible for people and have a negative impact on the community. When it's like the World Tree or something, I'm not as... That's interesting. I'm not uh, I'm not as worried about it just because there's so many more uh, in print. Although again, I personally don't I just stay away from speculating on cards. The kind of like MTD finance that I have done and am pretty comfortable with is is like buying collections, people selling their collections, then I feel good about it. Like that's the kind of MTD finance that I come away from feeling really positive because you have someone who presumably needs money. So they're trying to sell their magic card collection. You can help them by buying their collection. And then the way that you can potentially make a profit off of it is by doing a ton of work where you're like sorting everything, shipping everything, uh, going, doing a ton of typing into buy lists. So I feel like that's the kind of MTG finance that, that I have been the biggest fan of for the most part. Uh, well, no, I, I see what you're saying. I scream lesbian, and I don't, I don't disagree with you, but I don't think that... I think it's very hard for someone to cause, a, to cause a $5 card that is from a new set that people are opening boxes of to become a $10 card. Like, I don't think that a random person buying some copies can actually, can actually have that impact, because the supply... There's just so many of them in existence. So, so that's why it doesn't concern me so much, just because I'm not sure it's possible for someone to spike a, a world tree, let's say, from 5 to $10, when if it's an older card that isn't in supply, then, then yes. Because what happens with a card that's in supply is, let's say, someone was going to buy a ton of copies to try to sp spike the price, then you have someone else who can only play one spell each turn on base under tap. Then if the price did go up, then other people can buy boxes or would buy boxes specifically to get more of them and sell them and the price would come back down. So it's a little bit different between... It's a little bit different between, I would say, like in-print cards and like older cards that are not in print. At the same time, like I said, like my rule is just to avoid the whole speculation thing because... It, it just, it always ends up feeling bad. It's, there's just, I don't know. Even if it works out, you don't necessarily, you don't feel good about it because of the price of the card is like going up and that's not what I want. So even if you make money, you end up feeling bad about it. So like, what's the point? <laughs> like, what's the point of the whole thing? You can just avoid it and play magic and then life is good. <laughs> Like, that, that's my solution to a lot of life's problems. Like, hmm, I could be doing this other thing, but I could also be trying to resolve Bolas' Citadel. <laughs> why Why would I choose the other thing when I when I could be, uh, you know, casting Bolas' Citadels and comboing off? <laughs> and speculation falls falls under that as well. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I'm sorry, Wardian. Apologies, MTG Finance Rat. <laughs> I have over 200 copies of Flame of Flame Takavu. I use 100 as a sort of sleeve art in a clear sleeve. I think that's actually a really cool idea. I didn't know this this was a thing that you I never uh, realized this, but you can use a card as like essentially your sleeve before. I saw someone who who was doing it with like a zombie commander deck. So they had some random common zombie that they got 100 copies of and they were using the backside uh, they were using those copies as essentially like their card sleeve. So you'd have that facing one way, and then you'd have the actual cards facing the other way. And it actually looked it actually looked really cool. And if you do it with like a random common that's not expensive, 
that's not that's not super uh, uh super costly either. So I kind of I kind of like that idea. Hmm. Well, this archon is making us very sad. Like, is there even a point to playing this bullet to Citadel? Maybe we should have just let the Gargaroth live and tried to combo off. I'll play Dryad. Yeah, Archon is like a really good hate card for us. Play the tap land, pass the turn. No attacks. Is that tournament legal? I would guess no. I've actually not looked up the rules for it. I mean, I think for your random commander deck at your kitchen table, I it's I mean anything goes at the kitchen table. But could you go and play like a pro tour? I would guess no, but I would also guess that it's up to the head judge and whatever the judge says. But my I would not plan on it actually being. Hey, what's up, Grim? Hey, Krim, what are what are you doing up at at this hour? I guess it's it's almost noon. We have a new donation. Ooh, from SPK Dev five dollar. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what we wanted. Well, kick it, kill the Archon. Out of here. All right, pass the turn. We got the Citadel in hand. It might be party time. SPK Dev, $5 donation. Hey, Seth, wanted to say thank you for inspiring many a brew. The content you make really makes me smile on a daily basis, and it has inspired me to put Edgewall, Innkeeper, and more decks. Kappa. <laughs> I think you're taking the wrong message from my, my content, SPK Dev. <laughs> oh, no. Come on now. You're playing multiples of those? Ooh. Oh, thank you so much for the donation and for the kind words. Uh, content making you smile is, that's a big compliment. That's uh, that's one of the goals. One of the main goals, really. Uh, well, I mean, play Dread Presence. Play the land. Draw a card. Oh, okay. Okay. That's another way to kill an Archon. <laughs> We're fighting. We're fighting through the hate. Deacon! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent has an MDFC for that. To the top. Runs out Night of Autumn. Come on now. Come on now. Blows up. Our Dryad hits us, hits us. No blocks. About it. Passes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, let's just kick a Blood Chief's Thirst. Kill the Archon. Pass the turn. Do some blocking and hope. If they have Archon number three, then they got us. <laughs> yeah, this Archon is making our life a lot harder. Thankfully, the search of greatness is just scry every turn, apparently. Come on. No, no Archon number three. Ghost Quarter's an interesting decision. Huh. Why? Were they hoping for a strip mine? About it. Untap land. Attacks, attacks. Well, we're going to go to 10. Bolus of Citadel. Pathway. Explore. Maze Mines Tome. Fabled Passage. Scry. We really need Dread Presence. Ooh. Mm. Alright, pass the turn. 
no Coco. No Coco. All right, if we survive another turn, we got a shot. Whoa, massive donation. $50 from Barrow Gordon. No hate. No hate. No hate. Uh... $50 donation. Thank you for all your great ideas and content. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you so much, Barrel Gordon. Come on. Skyclave. Okay, that's that's fine. It doesn't hit Citadel. That's not Archon. Thank you so much. That is a massive donation. Really? Really? Really, 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 really. All right, so opponent hits the Citadel. Well, that's obnoxious. Opponent goes to combat. Hits us. Now we untap. Belaget recovery. Get back. Dread presence. Play dread presence. Play the land. Crack it. Get a swamp. Shoot down Llanowar Elves. Floral Hedron. Go! Barrow Gordon! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much. Opponents like a taxes deck, essentially. It's like green-white taxes, really. It's all, like, taxi effects to the top. I mean, no, opponents play an illegitimate deck. They just have a lot of... A lot of the right answers for what we're trying to do. Oh, Alright, crack this. Actually, alright, how do we win this game? Let's scry. Swamp to the bottom. Alright, so we will crack this. Get a swamp. Shoot down Night of Autumn. Lose our Dread Presence. We will double block. Kill Militia Bugler. Oh, put it. Uh, you can't kill the apparition with the trigger. Well, I mean, you can kill it, but it's still gonna exile your creature. It's still, it's still gonna be able to exile. So it doesn't save the creature, and then there's nothing exiled when it dies, so you don't get a token. Uh, and it doesn't have haste, so we save more damage killing the Knight of the Reliquary. Well, that's a draw. That's also oh. Well, down to one. Land. Kill Skyclave. Get a token. Explore. Explore. Land. Hit ya. Scry. To the bottom. Maze Mind's Tome. Scry. Are we going to beat the most ridiculous amount of hate cards for our deck? Huh? What do we... I don't even know what we hit there, but okay. Why is this happening? What does it want us to select? <laughs> to the bottom. Opponent. One, two, three, four. Ah! It's still doing it! Alright, vanishing light, sure. That's fine though. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm kind of glad it's going away because that's dr driving me insane. And we have binding of the old gods. Come back to us, our friend. Well, it's a citadel. Ugh. Well, scry that away. To the bottom. That's a land. That's good. On green. 
drain you. Land. Ho! Oh! Oh! Ho! Our opponent had so much. Our opponent had so much hate. I cannot believe we won that game. Our opponent had so many hate cards, and we were able to overcome it. Yeah, our opponent had, if you could pick the cards to play against our deck, they had like 12 answers to Bolus' Citadel. They had the Archons. They had Skyclave Apparitions, which kills everything except Citadel. They had it off. They had every single... Do you remember there was a Gargaroth on the battlefield 20 turns ago? And we still got there. Whew. Taking down the hate bears. Yeah, that was that was impressive. That was very impressive. Oh, oh, oh. I wonder I do kind of wonder if we want more. Let's look at the sideboard real quick. Maybe we need more unconditional answers. Like, this is the kind of deck where I really like Assassin's Trophy as a removal spell. I know giving the opponent a land is is a bad thing. But I really like Assassin's Trophy. And Assassin's Trophy also can get rid of Grafdigger's Cage. Hmm. Yeah, why was it was popping up because it's an instant? But I mean oh, so anytime anyone do, did everything. So that's like the their solution, as someone mentioned. That's like their solution to not getting a chance to cast something in response. A little clunky. Might might be just a tiny bit clunky. <laughs> uh, I don't know about Palaka Worm. I love Palaka Worm, but it feels like against Mono Red or something, it's just going to be too slow. Let's go down to Palaka Worm. Go down and eliminate. Go up two Assassin's Trophies. And then... I kind of want another Massacre Girl. Massacre Girl over a... Hmm. What is there... Is there any other good life gain spells we should be playing? If Worm also draws seven cards, I would be, I would be all about it. <laughs> More Klings? Yeah, Kling isn't bad. Plain White Celebration is sweet, but it does take a lot of life to cast it. But it is... Plain White Celebration is so much life. Like, you gain 16 and spend 7. <laughs> Demonic Pact? Demonic Pact's a bit slow, probably. Yeah, we can play the bonding card that our opponent was playing. I wonder... Maybe Pulse and Rasa is just better than Recovery? Oh. It hits, essentially... Hmm. It might be. Uh, Aetherflux is legal. Wow! The big donations keep flowing! Deacon! $50 donation. Love the content. Getting back into magic. Hey, let's try it like this. We know he's, we know he's update more. We are 2-0 with it, though, so it's working. Uh, love the content. Getting back into magic after a year off, so it's nice to see what I've missed. Ooh! Deacon, thank you so much for the donation. Question for you. Um... Why the year off, and why you're getting back into Magic now? This is something I've been wondering about, and trying to figure out. Uh, if people stop playing Magic... Ooh, Thrag Tusk. Thrag, oh. I do like Thrag Tusk. That's something I've been trying to figure out. If people... If some people stop playing Magic because of the pandemic, and are going to return... Yeah, Possum Rasa and Thrag Tusk seem like they could be good options. Thrag Tusk seems like it does what Palaka Worm does, but it does it... Eh, about time we play a Thought Seize deck. It feels like it does what Thought Seize does, but it does it much faster. Fast enough that it might actually be able to save us against a... Against a aggro deck, when Palaka Worm almost certainly isn't. Took a couple years off because it cost so much. Yeah, that makes sense. Was scheduled to play my first Commander game when the shutdown happened. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, obviously the world has way bigger concerns going on. But uh, there were some really sweet Commander products in the year of Commander that got a little bit wrecked by the pandemic for sure. 
Well, yeah. I assume we're going to get claimed the firstborn, but... But yeah, like, Commander Legends, in specific, I think that would have been a really popular set to play with at Magic Fest and stuff. If Magic Fest and stuff had actually been a thing when it was coming out... I saw... I think it was a Leon Trazi saying, essentially, that we should ban... We should ban Claim the Firstborn, because it invalidates so many creatures, and he might not be wrong. It is an annoying card to play against. Huh. Dryadron, but no lands. Boy, I mean, if nothing goes wrong and we hit our lands for the Citadel, things are sweet, but... There's not even really any point of attacking here. I guess we can attack and hope our opponent punts? I guess that's a that's a plan. I mean, at the same time, I do think that there's a concern about this hack deck being too good for historic. No, you're good, Monin. We're only we're we're only an hour in. We still got a couple hours to go. So you are. Oh, you did miss a two zero start though. We have won both of our matches so far. <laughs> with a uh, with Citadel. I do think that maybe the the sacrifice deck might be too good for historic. Whether or not claim the firstborn is the problem, that that's another story. Oh boy, more calling familiars. <sighs> hmm. Well, Dryad. <laughs> Ooh. Awkward, awkward, awkward. Dryad Tron. No attacks. Pass the turn. Please don't kill our stuff or us. Once a Mayhem Devil gets going, things become sketchy. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not literally dead on board, right? I don't think. Ping pinged. It is, I mean, the ban lists of magic are a little bit weird. It is weird that Punishing Fire can be banned. Can be banned because it uh, invalidates creature decks in modern, but that, I, I don't really understand that banning. <laughs> uh, I don't really understand why Punishing Fire is still banned. It might just be that Wizards has forgotten about it. But it seems like a card that would be pretty safe. I mean, if we draw land, if we draw land, we cannot kill the Mayhem Devil. So I think we are just dead. I'm not sure there's anything we can draw here. Maybe a removal spell? But there's not much. Opponent passes. Oh, wow. That is actually the perfect land. Yeah. So we got to do this now, right? So Bona can sack the two food, ping the mayhem devil. Oh, this isn't going to work because we got to sack the fabled passage. Yeah, so it doesn't... Because we got to crack our Fabled Passage to do it, so it doesn't actually work. Ugh, yeah, so we, we are just dead. Unless our opponent punts. We don't kill it because the land doesn't come into play. Because the Dread Presence is going to die before the land comes into play. So we're only going to get one trigger... Because they can sack another food here now to get another ping, and then we don't get the Fabled Passage land. Oh. All right. Well, just kidding. Opponent does not know that trick. All right. Well, the game continues. We're not dead yet. We were... We were dead. 
I don't think our opponent realized they could activate cat multiple times. Alright. Well. The game continues. We're not dead. We have a Bolas' Citadel and another Dread Presence. We might actually still kind of be in this. Jengatha, sure, that's fine. That's super fine. Opponent plays a land. Come on. Come on. Another Citadel. Well, Dread Presence. Pass the turn. Oh, we need a land. We got a shot. We got a shot. If we win this, it would be pretty spectacular. About it. Another Witch's Oven. Okay. As long as there's not another Mayhem Devil. Combat. <sighs> I think we better chump. Yeah, I guess we can triple block. Kill Jengatha. Okay. And? Sax. Sure. Get oh man, we got a shot, we got a shot. We actually have a chance here. Trail of Crumbs. Corvald. That's good, but it doesn't kill us right now. And if we get the Citadel do going, who knows? Who knows what could happen? I'm surprised that they put Thoughtseize into Historic before Inquisition. I would assume... Oh, this is a real format. Uh, I would assume that they would start with the lower-powered one and then work up to the higher-powered one, but... All right, there's a the Corvald. Gonna have to be a really good turn. Well, uh, untap draw. Binding. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually really tough now. Yeah, do we draw? Or do we just... Since we drew this, we could just kill Korvald and wait another turn. Like, they don't have that much damage on board. That might just be better. Yeah, let's just do that. Binding. Kill the Korvald. And that'll give us another draw in our upkeep. The problem is our opponent could draw Mayhem Devil. And Mayhem Devil, I think, just kills us. Alright, another Circle of Crumbs. We just gotta make the game go, like, another turn or two. But opponent's drawing so many cards. Yeah, draws a new hand. Corvald gets sagged, gets a bunch of food. I would not be surprised if they found Lethal by now. Yeah. Still going off. Well, opponent drew seven or something, but we killed a Corvald. <laughs> yeah, there's not much we can do about it. It was just scary that they drew so many cards. Corvald is pretty bust. Yeah, there it is. Um, so that's just game, right? Hmm. Yeah, but I'm not sure since we do removal if trying to combo is better than killing Corvald because we have to actually, we have to literally actually win the game. 
Well, I know team played out. The problem is they kill our dread presence, and and all of our. I mean. <laughs> They get to kill our combo pieces. And I think we're, like, just literally dead. About it. Without Dread Presence, our deck doesn't do anything anyway. Yeah, but playing Citadel doesn't really do anything anymore. Because Dread Presence is dead. And our life total is going to be so low that it just doesn't do anything. It costs nothing to make them do it. It costs time, though. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I, I kind of tend to scoop aggressively. I guess people... It's not even just a content thing. It's more like... I don't know. I value the five minutes of my life that I watch our opponent clicking cauldron familiars more than I value the point zero 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 one percent that I don't know their arena crashes or something <laughs> have you ever wanted to play your combo and your opponent skip let them have their fun I think that's a good rule for janky fun combos but when you're playing literally the best deck in the format that uh potentially that potentially is like in the realm of getting banned I'm not sure that applies in the same way it does to like someone playing their janky off the wall combo that no one's ever seen before well alright we played it out <laughs> but yeah I try to if if someone's playing something janky and unique uh, and against the odds ask I think that is uh a respectful thing to do if you can to uh to let them to let them play it out if you have the opportunity. Well, maybe we gotta go Ulamogs. This feels like a tough matchup. Massacre Girl's not even very good because they can sack their X ones. Maybe it's still good enough. Hmm. Well, we don't gotta worry about Graph Digger's cage at least. Uh, ever since Caldame came out, I wanted to move my whole deck at his store. It came up with Moss Pit Skeleton is a weird world spine worm. Ooh. Historic Dredge, A. Eh? I haven't really played many Moss Pit Skeletons. How's it a weird world spine? I gotta actually read it. How's it a weird world spine worm? What does this actually do? Whenever one or more counters are put on a creature you control, if it's in your graveyard, you can put it on top of your library. Ooh, okay. So that's a way to keep from milling out. Oh, this is a... Uh, how... Have you uh, have you got to play this at all? Um, have you got to play it at all, Halfling? I'm very curious. That's one of the janky combos that I haven't actually played yet from Keldime. The... The sagas with the with the clone. How how consistent has that uh has it been? Like has it been consistent enough to win some games with at least? Hmm. What do we got? Uh, maybe we don't Ulamog. Maybe we go with Massacre Girl. Oracle's probably going to die. Well, Alright, let's give it a shot. Give it a shot, give it a shot. Reality Smasher for the 41st month. Good lord, that's a long time. Hey man, Ben, subbed you since the start of college 2017. Thank you for all the YouTube comment over the years. Look forward to subbing for another 40 months. Well, thank you so much, Reality Smasher. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big super your video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we have bindings, but maybe we should be... Maybe we should be bringing it in anyway. Well, Fable Passage, go. Well, we got... This is the kind of hand our deck wants. We'll see. Sacrifice is a scary... A scary, scary matchup. Get a forest. Oh, not a land. All right. Well, tap land, go. Somehow we're having a hard time hitting lands. 
Yeah, I guess some of the historic stuff does seem like it would up the consistency a bit, maybe. Tap land. Well, land, please. Oh, no! I think we have, like, 30 lands in our deck. <laughs> Opponent. Land. Mayhem Devil. Sweet mother. All right. We are making this look very hard. <laughs> We're making it look hard at the moment. There's a lot of lands in the de uh, the deck still. Whoa, Strider. Opponent, Cauldron Familiar. It's us. Well, Cry the Granarium, I guess. Opponent. Hey, Seth, in your previous stream, you were kicking around the idea of a drinking steam uh, slash commander clash. Have you ever heard of the booze cube? Uh, I have heard of it. I have, uh, <laughs> I have never experienced it, but, uh, but yes, I, I have heard of the infamous booze crew, uh, cube. Actually, I think we have 32 lands, counting the MDFCs. Yeah, it's not bad. We answered some stuff. Opponent's getting to the Corvald part of the game, though, and uh, we're just not, you know. Well, we're at the Corvald part of the game. About it, it's us. Well, can't really do a whole lot about that. Sometimes your 32 land deck draws three lands out of, like, 15 cards, and... You go to the next one. <laughs> oh, that was a bummer. Scott Farkas, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup tier for our new subscriber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, sacrifice might be a might be a tough matchup anyway. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. I don't know how many of you watched. How many of you watched the commander stream that Gavin was on? Uh, like last Friday. A quick reminder before our next round that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need magic cards, you can get them at cardkingdom.com. How many of you watched the Commander stream? I thought, speaking of Corvald, I thought it was, I thought it was uh, interesting that Commanders came up and uh, one of the things that was being talked about was Gavin was saying how they've heard the community's feedback about about uh, commanders that are just super pushed and are the best thing in their colors and just invalidate anything else and that they're trying to move away from those commanders. Like, they're intentionally trying not to print those anymore and instead trying to print unique legends, the Orvars and the Yurlocks and stuff like that. But he specifically specifically uh, mentioned Corvald and Chulain as like examples of the type of commanders that they're trying not to print. Like those are the cards they don't want to be printing, which I thought was pretty interesting because those cards are only like a year old. So this isn't like, this isn't like a, like something where in the distant past they were doing this. This is like pretty new. So I thought that was uh, was interesting that he mentioned those cards in specific. Uh, well, I agree. I agree with the Arcane Signet thing. I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, that Wizards has has figured that out because I think that does really help the format or really hurt the format when you keep printing those those like broken not not broken but better than anything else at what they do new cards for commander so i mean if we get less i mean i love chulane just because it draws lots of cards but if we get less chulanes and less and less corvolds and arcane signets i think that's a definitely a good thing now let's scry oh no are we gonna have the mana trouble issues again scry all right, there's a swamp. I mean, if we can get up to our... If we can get up to Bolus's Citadel while still maintaining our life total, 
We got a shot. Oh, Poodits. Yeah, I don't know about creeping Trailblazer. <laughs> That's one that didn't even really make it in standard elementals for the most part. Risen Reef, on the other hand, that's a real one. Opponent hits us. All right, untap land, please. Well, that works. Okay, we're getting there. Main phase, Fabled Passage, Crag Fabled Passage. Swamp. Binding, kill the Risen Reef. Next land we could next swamp we can start shooting things down with red presence. Who Hey chat, what do you know about 3D printing? I've had a few people mention 3D printing, and I've seen some pictures of it on on Twitter. How uh how possible is it to 3D oh no, how possible is it to 3D print? Well, let's scry. For a swamp, mostly. Hmm. Not a swamp, but a land. Well, all right, we'll keep it. It does get us to Citadel next turn, at least. Oh, get an overgrown tomb tapped. Dread presence. Pathway. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Death touch with death. Dread presence is kind of sweet. <laughs> like how how expensive is it? How hard is it to get like a three D printer? I don't know. Just to just to mess around with it. Just look cool. I don't even know what I'd print. <laughs> it just looked neat about it. Oh, all right. Omnath in hand. Well, we'll see. Jeez, that's a lot of hellhounds. Opponents hit lands every time, too. Yeah, we needed that dread presence. Well, binding. Kill the Omnath. Pass the turn. Mm, no land. No, we're dead to a land. Well, opponent hits the land. All right, fair enough. Hmm. Oh, yeah. When you have no life, bullets to sit it out gets a lot, a lot worse. That was a. <laughs> That was an interesting elemental draw. Josh Gale, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. So a few hundred dollars? And what can I print with them? Like, like what, what can you print with a 3D printer? Let's say, I don't know. What, what is, can you just print anything? Is it like that, is it like that Futurama episode? The in one of the later seasons with with Bender and the train, and you can just you can just print anything basically. Can you could you print magic cards? Could you print three D magic cards? Print bees. <laughs> well, that's a great. I can get a three D printer and then print a 3D printer, and then return the original free 3D printer. We, we figured it out. We broke it. We broke the 3D printer problem. <laughs> oh, you need 3D models. Okay. That that might be over my head. I'm not a good visual, not a good visual artist. Oh. See, I was imagining it a little more sci-fi-y. I was imagining a little more sci-fi, honestly, where where maybe you could take and just, like, what are we cutting? We need more removal. We need the sweepers. Go down a binding. I guess Palaka Predation. A Blood Chief's Thirst. And eh, one Explore. Try it like that. I was imagining you could just, like, put an item in there and put a copy of it. 
But I think that's probably just a sci-fi, a sci-fi thing, not reality. That would be sweet though. If you could just clone things that you already already had copies of to make more of them. Oh, you don't have to make them yourself. That makes it easier. Can it? Yeah, that would be super convenient. If I had two of me, then the main me could play magic while the other me could could try magic legends. <laughs> And I wouldn't have to choose. <laughs> we, we'd have a team stream. <laughs> uh, which land cycle do you think they'll finish in Strixhaven? My... My dream is... My dream is that it'll be the... Oh boy, still having land... How are we having such a hard time hitting lands? My dream is that it'll be the Horizon lands, like Horizon Canopy. But that seems unlikely. If that's not going to be the option... Alright, Leafkin. If that's not going to be it, next up on the list would be... Would be the Cycling lands. Uh, Those are unfinished. The ones I really, really... We already got both sides of Ashland, so I think they said it was an unfinished cycle. So, so yeah. I don't think it could be the f uh, be the Fastlands, because we already got those. Huh. That adding two mana is probably bad. We need our land, though. Play the land... Kill your Sharn. Gain a life. Hit ya. Come on, swamps. Swamp, swamps. Well, triumphs would be sweet, but I think they specifically said enemy colored. So I don't think it could be tri lands. The bicycle lands are probably the most likely. That would be fine. I just really hope it's not the Battle for Zendikar cycle, which is unfinished, but pretty underpowered. Or. Oh, even worse, the Shadows of Innistrad lands, which, oh my god, those are just... Those are the absolute worst. Huh. What do we do here? Oof. Cry into land? Cry doesn't kill anything, though. We'd have to double cry. Yeah? I hate losing Dread Presence, though. Dread Presence is, like, our main engine. It would have been so nice if we could hit a swamp, and then we could have... Oh, what if we wait? What if we just wait a turn? What's the worst that can happen? They play a land, they grow this... Mm. Polar Beard, welcome to the fishbowl. Can we die? Maybe we can die. Draw with the cat, yeah. Alright, we'll wait, we'll wait. I think it's fine. Hopefully. I'm definitely scared, but I think odds are in favor of us living. Hopefully. Hopefully our opponent just plays some random stuff and then we can get even more value out of double crying. Or maybe they turn on Massacre Girl. All right, that's creeping. Trailblazer's fine. I guess they could have counters. That would be a problem. Yeah, I mean, the worst that could happen is we could die. That is true. Grows the dork. Uh, booted. Combat. Attacks. Down to 13. Hmm. <laughs> So this mean our opponent's leaving up counters? Well, let's take four. <laughs> For an expl oh my god, Mark has a lock wanes. Uh, well, one, two, three, four, five.
<laughs> if we explore and whiff on a land, we die. If we hit a land, it could be way better. If our opponent has a counter, we're dead regardless. Well. Yeah, go to combat. Play the land. Go to combat. Attack. About it. Ooh. Our opponent could also block in a way that turns on Massacre Girl. Like so. Well, now I guess we explore. Oh, they do have something. <laughs> Opponent? <laughs> No counters. Very bad for the seventh month. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Ether gusts their own Omnath. Interesting. Well, that does mean Omnath is coming back, and we're going to have to find a way to deal with it. Yeah, it would have been nice for Omnath to be dead, but down to eight. Grows it. Well, that's decent. Kill Omnath. Explore. Ooh, all right, more removal's good. Massacre Girl, you. Wow, well, he might be doing it the old-fashioned way. What? What land cycle do you think is going to be reprinted, chat? I would say the bicycle lands. That would be number one. Bicycle lands. There's other possibilities, but that seems most likely to me. Well, go tagging, hit ya. Now we might as well cry. And floral hedron go oh bfc or innistrad i mean bfc's fine i guess they should be completed sometime so i guess i would be okay with that i don't think it's an exciting land cycle by any stretch but but it's also it's also a fine one to complete it's mad, but it's fine. Uh, on the other hand, Shadows of Innistrad lands. Oh, I don't care if they ever if they ever complete those. I think that is like lowest tier to a land cycle. I guess you know what probably makes the most sense though would be would actually be Shadows of Innistrad lands. Because they do synergize with triomes. Because you have to reveal something in your hand of the, the right land type. So that actually makes a ton of sense the more I think about it. I might change my prediction. I might change my prediction to the Shadows of Innistrad lands. Because we already have cycling lands. And I can see the justification of like, hey, we have triomes. It makes it really easy to have a land to reveal, to have them come into play untapped. They're just not very strong. But when it comes to standard, like, a land's a land. In standard, you just play, you play what you have access to. And they're all functional, at least in standard. Even if they're not all super exciting. They are pretty bad with MDFCs, that is true. Oh, oh, better than Pathways? I don't know. I, I'm i one of the biggest Pathway critics, but boy, do I, I strongly dislike... I think it comes from playing so many budget decks and having been screwed over by the Shadows Over Innistrad land so many times playing budget decks that, uh... 
<laughs> but I just, that land cycle drives me crazy. And I don't really like Pathways that much. Zelsnog, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How many of the cycles they could actually finish are better than Pathways? I mean, there's not actually that many cycles left that could be finished. We looked through it the other day, and there's only, unless you're going to count, like, Nimbus Maze, which is only Nimbus Maze that's ever been printed, uh, and stuff like that, which I don't think we probably should, then there's really not that many, not that many options that could potentially be reprinted. Um... Yeah, playing on black. Go. Well, we can Azusa and ramp into Citadel and see what happens. It's been a minute since we have had a Citadel on the battlefield. Pathways, I think I've been too hard on them. I think to be more, more correct about my feelings on Pathways, it is that Pathways, I think, are really bad. Index that are more than two colors. I think index that are two colors, pathways can be can be solid. If you're if you're just a two color deck, then I think pathways are decent. But I think that pathways are like actively bad index that are three to five colors. Those are the decks where I have a lot of trouble with them. But in a straight two color deck, I think that pathways are actually like a pretty reasonable land cycle that is arguably on par with or close to on par with uh, Fastlands. Now to the bottom. So we lose our Azusa. We go to 18. We scry. We want to land or a... We want to... Well... Uh, Hmm. Is that worth keeping? Hey, C Elf, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully the store goes well. Ah, oh, the problem is if we hit a land we can play Citadel. I guess we can just wait. I mean killing Omnath does have a decent amount of value here. And then we can try again for Citadel next turn. So, kill it. Go up to 19. Opponent's only got three cards in hand. That's not that many. Tap land. Okay. That's like the best case scenario. Hits us. Scry. Massacre Girl. No. Draw. Well, Dread Presence, Fabled Passage, Crack Fabled Passage. We're going to wait one more turn, get rid of the threat, shoot it down, and then next turn is the turn. Next turn is the party turn. Next turn is the party turn. All right. Opponent, Risen Reef, sure. Have your fun, opponent, because we are going to try to have our fun, too. I guess they could have a counter. Okay. They cannot have a counter. Gotta get those Risen Reef triggers. Land into play. Grows the brush fire. That's kind of a neat synergy. Hits us. Well, here we go. I wish that was still on our deck. Well, uh, what was the Citadel? Scry it away. There it is. Dryad. Dread Presence. Bellagat Recovery as a land. Shoot down you. Ugh. Shoot down you. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Massacre Girl. Castle Lock Wayne. Drain you. Drain you. How far can we go? Dread Presence number three. 
That's it. Hit you to ten. Woo! We haven't uh, we haven't saw Tust yet. I've been having too much fun citadeling. Opponent. Oh! 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 Chandra. That's actually insanely good for our opponent. Uh, okay. Uh, go to combat. Kill Chandra. Hit our opponent. We lost all three dead presences. Uh, that's awkward. Oracle. Fabled Passage, crack it. Shuffle away this cry. Forest. Explore. Hmm. Dryad. Go. All right. Yeah, we might be winning the old-fashioned way. <laughs> The cry of the Granariums were a little awkward. Again, really. Opponent is refusing is refusing to uh to go quietly. Although I think they're dead now. Yeah, we'll just be respectful and kill our opponent. Oh Elementals gave us a run, but we still got there. Through double Chandra. <laughs> You can also activate Citadel. Citadel needs 10 permanents, though. If you get 10 permanents, then uh, then yes. Whoo. All right, what, uh, what do you think, chat? Do you want to keep Citadeling? Because it's been pretty fun. Or, yeah, it got to be non-lands. Or do you want to do you wanna try the, the Sawtust Demolisher Mutate deck? What? I mean, the other thing is, if we don't get to Sawtust Demolisher, we can always mutate in the future. More Citadel, mutate, mutate, more Citadel. I want to see some land destruction. Keep Citadel, but add Panharmonicon. We don't really have... What would Panharmonicon do? I think Citadel's winning. All right, so we'll do we'll do mutation in the future. We'll stick with Citadel for today because it seems like that is, that is winning the vote. And it's been fun. Hey, what's up, Cornea? How are you? Uh, Mutate actually is kind of a non-bow with Panharmonicon because Mutate creatures don't really enter the battlefield. They, like, merge or mutate with, uh, with the other creatures, so you don't actually get enter the battlefield triggers usually. Yarion, eh? Well, let's see if we can resolve our stuff. Uh, like always, if we resolve a Citadel, anything can happen. Oh, where is the wind counter? Oh, ha ha! <laughs> it's back, and we're actually three and one. <laughs> it was, uh, it was muted. What is what is the visual version of mute? Uh, it's not about hidden. <clears throat> it was hidden. That makes uh, that makes more sense. Well, play land. Explore. We're getting close. Up to four lands. What kind of Yarian deck are they? Hopefully not the kind with counters. Minimized. Minimized also makes sense. Lanor Elves. Now play this. Crack this. I think we're hilariously going to binding this elf because we need the we need the ramp. <laughs> The rap mode is actually kind of relevant here, so... Alright, kill the land of elves. Pass the turn. Yeah, it looks like Jund Yarion. Maybe our opponent's just playing Yarion as a bluff. <laughs> Not even... Guess they needed that... Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> we're, we're ranking up through Platinum with Bolus' Citadel. <laughs> We broke it. We broke it. We broke it. Yeah, we scared him. We scared him right away. Huh. Maybe our opponent had a deck issue or something because <laughs> they were playing a lot of Judd cards after revealing a Yarion. I played against someone 
in standard earlier who I swear they were playing Salta Yari on, but I don't know what they did wrong, but for some reason they just did not have Yari on. Like they had the 80 card deck. They had all the just like tier Salta Yari on stuff. All the stuff that all the stuff that you would expect, but there was no Yari on, and it kinda blew my mind. Like if you're gonna play 80 cards and you're gonna play all why wouldn't you play it? It's so free rolly, like <laughs> How in the world is that not in your deck somehow? Well, Fable Passage, go. Yeah, I guess that's possible. But if you have 80... If you have enough wild cards to build an 80 card deck, don't you probably have one more to get the Arion? <laughs> that's like the namesake card. That's like the worst one to be missing. Cool. Oh. Well, this is probably going to be a Massacre Girl matchup after sideboarding. We'll see. I mean, if we can get Dryad Dread Presence going, that might be able to keep the Elves in check. We're going to have to get it going soon, though. Opponent's already up to six mana here on turn three for creatures. Morrowind. Llanowar. Hits us. No blocks. Land untapped? Land tapped. Well, Dryad. Floral Hedron. Castle Lockwain. Go. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Found it. Land. Nothing in hand, please. No hoofs. Definitely no hoofs. Hoof definitely kills us. War Master. Oh, boy. This is such a juicy deck for Massacre Girl. Massacre Girl. Uh, Arch Druid. Well, that's not looking good. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Okay. Well. Sure. Maze Mind's Tome. I think they might have... I think they might have us here. <laughs> huh, if elves can have muxes that I think, or if goblins can have muxes, I think the elves can have a real card, too. Hmm. Are we just dead no matter what we choose? Because we we're going to have to chump with Floral Hedron, right? If we kill Archdruid, they can like, Double War Master Pump. If we kill Morrowind, they War Master Pump. Uh, but if we kill War Master, we have to chump here. Ugh, yeah. Well, alright. We will. We gotta kill the War Master. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> Alright. Well, opponent hits another pumper. <laughs> well, Cry of the Canarium, good magic card. Masker Girl, very good magic card. Noxious Grasp, good magic card. We got a plan after sideboarding. We get to bring in... I mean, we were super dead either, either way, most likely. It was going to be really hard to, to, uh, to get out of that. Because we just take such a big hit that what's our we draw bullets to Citadel and just don't have the life. That is the hard part about... I think it's up to 200 now, actually, Allosaurus Shepard. Although, I do give Wizards... I do give Wizards a, a bit of a break when it comes to Jumpstart in specific. Yeah, it's, a, it's up to 199 So it's $199. There's got to be some other pretty... Yeah... Tiny Bone, 76. Hoof, uh, Ristic... Ristic Study? Is that expensive? Is that the most expensive Ristic Study? I guess they're all... Jeez, Ristic Study's really expensive. Uh, Burvac, 45. Emil, 38. But I give them a bit of a break when it comes to Jumpstart. Just because Jumpstart got wrecked by the pandemic. Like, from everything Wizards has said... And I, I think I believe them about this. Like, their goal was to have Jumpstart be just an unlimited supply set. Like, it was going to, or a very heavily printed set. 
So, yeah. I, I don't think that that was their intention. I think something like Times Power Remastered can definitely argue that with something like Times Power Remastered, Wizards should have should have printed more and should have known to have printed more. Uh, and that's on them. On the other hand, when it comes to... When it comes to Jumpstart, the, I mean, that, the set was being printed and coming out right when the pandemic was, like, really picking up and everything was shutting down. So, like, printers were shut down, and they just kind of, it, it seems like to me that they kind of got wrecked by circumstances more or less beyond their control. When they really wanted to print a bunch of it, and the printers were closed and they just couldn't like it was impossible for them to do at that time because of the pandemic so i think their goal was for allosaurus shepherd to be a lot cheaper and this had to be a lot more accessible it just didn't work out that way so a war master oh, play the land binding Kill the War Master. I mean, we might be getting on this bullet to sit out with a lot of life. Time Spiral, on the other hand, that's Wizards intentionally trying to keep card prices high. I mean, they basically said that. <laughs> not in those words, of course. They're not just going to say, like, oh, we want these cards to be expensive, but they say things like... Um... They say things like, oh, we have to uh, we have to think about collectors and things like that. That's kind of like the code word for, we don't want these prices to drop too much. So, you know, there's, there's multiple things we have to consider. We got to think about printing this out. But then we also have to consider the collectors who are trying to, like, collect the product. So, yeah. I think Time Spot Remastered prices are, are on Wizards, but I don't really give them... Uh, I don't really attribute Jumpstart to them too much. I think that was a pandemic. Ugh. Well, they already have all the mana in the world, so. All right. I think the question's going to be, can we sit it out into Massacre Girl? Well, play the land. Shoot down Morrowind. That was a that was a good draw. That was a very good draw. I kind of want to very greedily play Bolus's Citadel, but that's I'm sure not wise. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be a massacre. Shishing, shishing. <laughs> so opponent grows their dorks, but this is fine. Cause we get to So we lose Tangled Floral Hedron. And then we get to kill a war master. Oh. Yeah, we get to keep it going. Mortality! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we need an extra removal spell, but the elves are down. We're at 25, and that's a citadel as our last card in hand. <laughs> shishing, shishing. About, ooh, well, that's a good last card in our opponent's hand. Collected company. I think ours might be better, though. <laughs> this is going to be hopefully sweet. Extra land drops, dread presence, please. Pone it. Oh, my God. Fierce Empath. Gets the hoof. Well, Bolus of Citadel. Fabled Passage. Noxious Grasp. 
floral hedron. Crack fabled passage. Get a swamp. Dryad. Citadel. Dread Presence. Pathway. Ho! Oh. Shoot it down. Explore! Yes! Oh, two in a row! <laughs> Alright, well. I guess we just wait. Hit ya. <laughs> <sighs> Hoof isn't too scary by itself. Like, sure, run it out. You hit us for five or whatever. Six. Lanor. Passes. Well, Dread Presence. Kill your Lanor. <laughs> hit your face. Dread Presence. Explore. Come on, land. Whoa! Okay, there's land. Castle Lockwade. Double trigger. Face and face, and we're gonna win this. We're gonna win this and take down the elves, down to 12, down to 10. Maze Mind's Tome. Scry. To the bottom. Hmm. Four, five, six, seven. Well. Oh! That Dread Presence can attack. That's Xaxes. <laughs> oh yes 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 wow that was sweet man the turns when you get the bullets to citadel are so powerful like the combo really works the games where it gets thought seized eh, not not as exciting but when you get the citadel going it is spectacular why not play branch walker explore combo uh i mean that's definitely another way you can build uh build around citadel I think I think that is a another pretty powerful option. Ooh, we're going to keep this. We got the Citadel. We can kill our opponent's first thing. There's a Dread Presence, too. That's good. Oh, we're going to Tomb Tapped. Go. All right. All right. Give us some ramp. Give us some ramp. Hey, Benny! How are you? How, uh, how is life these days? Yeah, we played Branch Walker Explorer Combo in Standard. And it is pretty sweet when it goes off. Um, yeah. We'll see if we regret that, but we're going to kill it. Castle Lockwain. Dryad would be our best draw. Dryad into this Dread Presence, into the Bullets of Citadel would be really good. Opponents. Fierce Empath. Sure, sure, sure. Did you ever end up listening to Daft Punk? Yes. I did listen to... Oh, I can't remember the name of the album, but it was one everyone said from like early two thousands, maybe somewhere somewhere around then. Um, yeah, it wasn't. I I could see I could see why people would like it, but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily my my jam. It might have been Discovery. I think Discovery sounds sounds right. So yeah, I mean, I think it was it was fine. One. Okay, so they can't kill us yet. Oh, sadly, I think we have to play. I think we have to play Dread Presence, even though we're probably gonna end up wrathing it. But this helps make sure the math, uh, the math on Massacre Girl is right. Land. They're one short, I think, right? They need seven mana? All right. Seven mana's not death. Seven mana's not death. If they clan call her up another lord, we can get out from under it, hopefully. Unless they do it at instant speed. 
Arch Druid. And. Oh! Oh no! Wow! That kills us. That throws off the math. Yeah, fair enough. Oh. Uh, was not expecting Primal Might. Hmm. Yeah? I don't think our opponent even knows how big of a deal that was. Because if they didn't fight that, they would have lost their entire board. Like, Massacre Girl, Hard Wrath, and the 4-4 left behind, and then we win. Uh, good play by our opponent, I guess. Were we talking about Liliana? Ah. I feel... I, I'm kind of... I don't think that New Liliana is a rawly powerful planeswalker. That's kind of that's kind of my thinking on it. I feel like it's a fine planeswalker, but when I don't know, like when I compared it to Liliana Dreadhorde General, it was hard for me to see what made New Liliana better than Old Liliana. Like if you just look at them both side by side. I think I think that I would have to rank Professor Onyx like a bit behind. Like if you just compare them. So Professor Onyx, the plus 1 is nice. Being able to plus 1 to strategic planning, that's pretty powerful and it fills the graveyard. Uh but it's not a good defensive mode. Part of the power of Liliana Dreadhorde General, the plus makes a zombie, and then you can chump with it, and then you draw the card anyway. So the plus one with the static ability is kind of like defend my planeswalker and generate card advantage. When the plus one on Professor Onyx doesn't protect your planeswalker. Uh also, Dreadhorde General, more starting loyalty. I think that the negatives probably favor Dreadhorde General. And then the ultimates, I think, also favor Dreadhorde General. So the one thing that Professor Onyx, I think, has going for it, compared to Dreadhorde General, is Professor Onyx's Magecraft ability can be really sweet. So I think... I don't think Professor Onyx is bad. And I think there probably could be standard decks that'll take advantage of it. Just, like, control the board, play some mid-range strategy, uptick 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 start drawing through your deck drawing more threats that seems fine but i think by far the most interesting and exciting part is like the the storm aspect trying to go like mono black storm with professor onyx but i don't think it just in terms of like raw power i think that dread or general especially because it's more likely to survive because it has better re uh better protection I think that uh, I think that it ranks a little bit behind, but I think that's fine. Like, I'm a big believer in Planeswalkers being. Hmm. Yeah, we'll keep it. Uh, a big believer in Planeswalkers being. Oh no, oh no, control. I'm a big believer in Planeswalkers being unique and powerful enough to see playing niche archetypes, but not be. Like some of the planeswalkers we got in War of the Spark, which are, we're just a huge like the Nissas and the Teferis. Like the best thing in every archetype is is not a good place for planeswalkers to end up. So I would much rather have some of these new style planeswalkers. Like Kazmina's another one. Kazmina's super unique. I really really like. Hmm. We need green mana. I really like how Kazmina will play i think it's really unique it's really powerful if you're playing uh like a super friend style deck but if you were just but if you were just uh playing in a generic deck it's kind of meh well land untapped azusa castle lockway pass the turn Oh, boon it. This 
might be tough because I'm not sure how we resolve Bolas' Citadel against this deck. Our Thawseas are in the sideboard, so we have to wait. Oh, it runs out another one. Takes it down. So we have to wait a, until game two to have Thawseas. That might help. But game one is probably going to be tough. Liliana Tribal. We need more Planeswalkers that reference each other. Uh, yes, we really are. We really are foreign too. Well, we gotta keep Citadel. Uh, and then Binding. I mean, I guess if there's good news, it's that our opponent has like a ridiculous amount of wraths that are not gonna be that good against us. Do you think it would be worth going and explore with Wild Growth Walker? Um, oh dear. Well, if they have a counter to defend Teferi, this could could be tough. Well, get a forest. I mean, this is all we can do. Well, we'll shock ourselves. In case they have the MDFC or something, sensor. All right, to ferry down. Go to combat, hit ya. Pass the turn. Uh, so I think that you can build a good, really good bolus of Citadel with the Explorer archetype. Whether I would just jam Explore into this deck, uh, I'm not. I'm not convinced about that. That I would just want to jam it in. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> That's so many cards in the blue player's hand. <laughs> I want to build Simic mid range and historic with Kazmina. Ooh, yeah. What other planeswalker is going to play, Benny? Did we just sl oh it can't be right to just slam it but is it ever gonna get better it's not like we have a thought seize to draw into you know what we just slam it all right opponent does have a counter as expected yeah i mean if we had a thought seize i think we'd wait and try to find the thought seize but without having access to any discard like i don't know I don't think we're going to get a, a better opportunity, necessarily. Well, Maze Mind's Tome. Draw a card. Maze Mind's Tome. And Maze Mind's Tome. And attack ya. Yeah, the downside of Bullets and Citadel is if you don't have. S <laughs> you got us. You got, you got us. I didn't know this card existed or that it was an historic. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I honestly did not know this was a magic card. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I did at one point when I was making a spoiler video about Jumpstart, but I, I've i never seen it before. That's a first. Pony is playing every random wrath S card imaginable. And then some. Well, okay. Uh, Go to our main phase. Kill the angel. Attempt to. Opponent thinks twice. Why would you not just play Settle the Wreckage instead? I mean, they're playing it too. They got they got them all. If they can potentially wrath aboard, <laughs> it is in our opponent's deck, and then some. Uh explore. <laughs> Opponent gonna scry. Gotta find another angel of the dire hour. Angel of dire hour. 
<laughs> you know. Play the tap land, pass the turn. We got a lot of stuff that we want. It's just so hard to to resolve it against these control decks. Open to the sea. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just so expensive. Like, that's kind of the issue is... Like, if you're up against goblins or gruel or something... Oh, come on now. Narset part 20. If you're up against a deck like gruel where you really would want the Settle the Wreckage effect, I think the issue is that it's, it's seven mana, so you're just going to be dead. You're just going to be dead before it comes down. But I guess if you're like... All right, rather than playing, I don't know, Dream Trawler or something, I'm going to play an Angel as my finisher. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, oh, dear. I guess that sort of makes sense. Ugh. Yeah, Control is, like, my least favorite archetype to play with jank decks by far. They're just not equipped to, uh, to keep up with control dryad I think we're actually going to <clears throat> dread presence actually pretty tempted just to scoop trying too much with the triumphs I mean <sighs> there's narsets though so we can't really get too much more value I mean, I guess that's kind of the issue, is our opponent's playing Planeswalker stacks, which uh, which is tough against Cardra. Um, hey, Seth, do you think Wizards will continue to find ways to use the old border in Magic cards? I think that we will see old border again. I don't think that... We know this is a Doomscar, by the way. Um... <laughs> It really is every year. Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call it. We can't draw out of it. We can't resolve our payoffs, and we know our opponent has. They're playing like one of every wrath in existence. I've never seen such a thing. Well, okay, we do have a, a bit of a sideboard plan for this deck. The bit of the sideboard plan is Ulamog is great if we get to it. We get to bring in thought seizes, which are very good. Um, and who knows? Maybe our opponent will not draw as many Wraths. Thought Distortion can also be very effective. We get a couple more ways of dealing with, with dorks. Hmm. <laughs> what else do we cut? Probably a Zeus, uh... Recovery might be worth it. We gotta cut something, though. Maybe it's Tangled Floral Hedrons. Like, Floral Hedrons seem like they're just gonna get Wrath, because our opponent has so many of them. Yeah, opponent's playing the biggest uh, variety of Wraths I've ever seen. <laughs> what is your favorite magic card to give a gentle kiss? Uh, I mean... I haven't really kissed my magic cards too much, but I guess Panharmonicon. <laughs> I guess when it comes down to it. Bonet, mulliganing for Angel of Dire Hour. Lane, lane line. Yeah. Worried about discard coming in, I guess, which makes sense. Bonet plays a land. Well, we will Maze Mind Stone. Go. Pass the turn. I mean, we got the Citadel. Can we resolve it? Mm, I don't know. Pwn it. Passing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's a card. That is a card. All right. Pass the turn. Oh, we found the one of Thought Distortion. So we need to... We need to deal with this Ley Line. And then we need to get two more lands. And then we can really punish our opponent for... Have I ever mentioned how I feel about Narset? <laughs> <sighs> mistake walkers. The mistake walkers of War of the Spark. <laughs> well, binding the old gods. Blow up the ley line. Yeah, 
Yeah, I didn't think anyone except Krim played Think Twice. If there's any concern I have about the new Kazmina, it's that it does make the Nar sets of the world better. And Nar set has managed to dodge to dodge uh, to dodge Bannings, unlike many of her friends from More of the Spark. Like <clears throat> to Fairy. How does Krim love every card that that uh <laughs> that everyone else hates? <laughs> it's almost an impressive skill, I think. The Krim manages to uh <laughs> to do that. I don't binding. Overgrow tube tapped. Uh eh, Forest. Well, next turn we should be able to get rid of our opponent's hand. And then that should clear the way for Bolas' Citadel, which should win us the game. Opponent, land, and passing. Oh, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. While I don't like losing an Arsa, I do like resolving Thought Distortion against it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, <laughs> what do you say, friend? What do you say? <laughs> Watch them have like three Angel of Dire, dire Hours. <laughs> All right, hand bit less scary. We will play a tap land. We will pass the turn. Bullis is Citadel ready and waiting if they draw into another counter opponent i swear uh i haven't played magic legends yet benny have you opponent draws it to fairy awkward untaps there's no way there's no way they're that lucky right <laughs> hmm. Well, let's do that again, I guess. We didn't really want that six life anyway. <laughs> uh, Dread Presence. Fabled Passage. Oh, we can't kick it, though. All right, Crack Fabled Passage. Get a Swamp. Kill Narset. Kill to Fairy. Oh, yes, that was a turn. That was a good turn. How is it? Like, should I should I try to check it out? Knowing that I've never really played games like that before, so it's not like really my my scene for the most part, but would you recommend me trying to check it out? The gameplay of Magic Legends has potential if it is improved, the UI, and there's an end game. But as of now, the storytelling is incredibly clumsy at best. Husband says no. Not right now. I can't see why you'd enjoy it. Okay, so... Oh, MTG Civ I would play. I'd be all about MTG Civ. I, I've discovered... <laughs> I've discovered that you can do things with mods. Oh my goodness. Mods on Civs do some crazy, some crazy things. You can, they're so, you can make the game much better or much worse, I think. Uh, but uh, it definitely is a good way to shake it up. I feel like Civ had gotten a little boring for me. Like, I don't know. Maybe I got to try to figure out starting to play multiplayer because I think I've just played enough Civ 5 that, that uh, playing against the UI was not really that much of a challenge. I guess the other thing I could do is just play... Is play different civilizations that I don't normally play. That might be another, another good way to go about it. Um, yeah, let's draw a card. We might want that binding eventually. Uh, I normally play Civ 5. 
Man, I cast this as a spell. Take the absorb. Dry it down to ten. All right, thought sees. Um, no, well, fabled passage. Crack it. Get rid of blood chief's thirst. Get a forest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shuffle back into Blood Jeep's Thirst. Pass the turn. <laughs> what a. Uh, what difficulty do I play? So it kind of depends. Um,. It kind of depends uh, on the mood that I'm in for. I think I always play either a mortal or a deity. Oh, boy, we're kind of spinning the wrong things off the top of our deck here. I always play either a mortal or deity. The thing with... The thing with a mortal is it actually kind of feels like a game of Civ. Uh, deity... You kind of got to focus on winning and... You kind of got to focus on winning, and you have to play in ways that are kind of counterintuitive for the most part. Like, you got to try to, you got to min-max it, I think, on Deity. Deity, I beat it on Deity uh, a couple of times, but I normally play Immortal because I just think it's more fun on Immortal. I don't like the way I have to play on Deity, basically. The way you have to play is really... I find it kind of tedious. Narset. Sure. A Civ stream could be fun. I should learn... I should learn Civ. The problem with Civ... Uh, Civilization. A uh, video game series. Uh... Uh, yeah, we'll just draw it. We can do it on our turn. Well, Thought sees you. Opponent. Omens. I should learn six. I don't really like the how the cities are laid out in uh, in six. Oh, but what's the game? Uh, Civ is a turn-based strategy game. Opponent has two counters. What is what is the proper classification? What is the proper classification of Civ? Four four X. Well, down to three. Opponent negates. Uh, play the land. Binding. Blow up the omen. Go attacking. Opponent untaps. Are there any other Civ like games? That uh, that are anywhere as near as good as Civ. Something I've noticed with myself in games is like, once I find a game that I think's really good, I don't really explore games that might be similar but somewhat worse. Like Magic, I learn Magic. I don't really have any interest in Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh!ing or whatever because why would I play a worse worse version of a of a similar game? If I could just play the best version of the game. I feel like I do the same thing with Civ. Like Civ is just so good. It's one of the one of the only games that I think is actually like on par with with Magic. And and I do the same thing with Civ where it's like, it's so good, why would I try anything that was similar to to Civ, but not exactly Civ? Endless space, endless legends. Okay. Is has anyone played Beyond Earth? I guess Beyond Earth is the one 
well, I don't know. Did I play Civ one? I don't. I don't remember. I started playing Civ with an early edition. I've never played Beyond Earth though. They always at the end of Civ five when the game ends, they always like go Beyond Earth. <laughs> I was like, eh, I, I better check with someone first. <laughs> Oh, you beta tested it? That's sweet, Tonos. It just likes depth. Oh, well, Guamanco's code. I'm glad I could uh, be helpful. I'm glad you were... Uh... I did it again! I did it again! That's... It happened again. We again shuffled into... Wow. We again shuffled into the card that was on top of our deck before. So strange. <clears throat> now we're at one life, which is as low as it goes. We really need a Dread Presence to start gaining us back life so we can do more things. Two to the bottom. Opponent untaps. To fairy. Draws a card, untaps. And, yeah. Sure. Oh, Balagate Recovery is going to be good eventually, I think. Hopefully. Uh, well, Blood Chief's Thirst. To fairy. Opponent has a negate. Assassin's Trophy to Fairy. Oh no! Wow! 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 wow. That is something. I'm right there with you on Teferi. Teferi is not very fun to play with or against. Opponent finds a wrath. Untaps their lands. Well, Bally get a recovery. Get back. Huh. Well, get back binding. Play binding. Kill to fairy. We're going to end up dying to that silly angel. I got a feeling that's where this is headed. About it. foretells well play well there goes the swamp we wanted play dread presence castle lockwain another bolus of citadel opponent attaps doomscar of course one of the many wraths opponent passes pass the turn Oh, we're not gaining any life. That's the problem. And our opponent's drawing infinite counters. Oh, we're going to lose this to that silly angel. What a way to lose. What a way to lose to a card you didn't even know, I didn't even know existed. <laughs> uh, opponent untaps. Draws a counter. Plays a land. Well, pass the turn. Yeah, one life is not a good life total to be at. Cycles. Our win condition is playing stuff, but blue-white control is not a fan of that win condition. Plays a land. Eh, eh, 
to Fairy 40. Yeah. <laughs> Opponent. Passes. Well, one, two, three, four. Blood Chief's Thirst to Fairy. Maybe we shouldn't have went so low on life. That might be part of the issue. Is going so low on life made it so we couldn't thought seize? So maybe we should have stayed higher. Opponent. Yeah, draws another one. They just keep coming. Well, play a Dryad. Play a Dread Presence. Floral Hedron. <sighs> Shoot to Fairy. Explore. Floral Hedron. Shoot to Fairy. Explore. Fabled Passage. Shoot to Fairy. Do we have a land left to get? Is the question. Thought sees you. Oh, they had the angel. Okay, angel down. We're staying alive. We're staying alive. It's not over yet. We're at one. Crack. How many cards are in our deck? Ten? Alright, we'll crack. Swamp. Drain you. Maze Mind's Tome. Dryad. Fabled Passage. Drain you. Opponents can have, like, one turn to top deck. Crack, Fabled Passage. We still got our Ulamog, too. Oh! Oh! Oh, what a comeback! We fought through the Stax Walkers, through the Teferi, through every Volus, uh, through every Dova's Veto. Wow. Oh! I cannot believe that that worked out. That was... That was insane. Well, we just ground and ground and ground. Yeah, that was game two. This is this is going to go down as the longest match in the history of the stream. Uh, yeah, I guess we run it back. Yeah, I mean, it worked somehow. Yeah, it's definitely sweet, Dusty Brush. It definitely is. Citadel just does some ridiculous things. So... Destiny Spinner, Allosaurus Shepherd. So Allosaurus Shepherd only makes green things uncounterable. So it wouldn't save our Citadel. Or Dread Presence, but mostly Citadel. And then Destiny Spinner is only enchantments. Something like that, I think, could be interesting. But I'm not sure either one of those actually do it. How much time's on the clock? Uh... We're probably behind. We'll have to look when we get back into it. Oh, creatures in a jam? Okay. Yeah, maybe. I could see... I could see considering it. But what's the Citadel? That's an artifact, right? The thing is, I feel like whatever we would play to fight through counters, we need to force through Citadel. Because really, when it comes down to it, Citadel is the card that makes the deck work. Like, that is that is the card. King Sharko! Yeah, we could use an Assassin's Trophy reprint already. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Uh, have you ever brewed around one of my favorite cards, Pygmy Hippo? <laughs> Oh, Pygmy Hippo is hilarious, and it doesn't make much sense anymore. The problem is, ah, it's, ooh, this hand's actually kind of good against control. The problem is, it's only legal in Legacy. I don't know, do you, oh boy, do you think there should be more, more Legacy against the odds? I guess that would be the, the question, like, is that something you want, is to, is more, more Legacy against odds type content? 
I feel like, on one hand, Legacy has one thing going for it, which is... Hmm, we're probably going to ramp our opponent in a Planeswalker, aren't we? It's awkward. Um, it has one thing going for it, which is, if you play the blue cards... You can kind of, almost like standard, you know how we've been memeing about, oh, if you play the 20 good adventure cards, you can fill in the rest of your deck with whatever you want, and it's probably going to be really good. Legacy is kind of like that with the blue cards. Like, if you play the good blue cards in Legacy, Force Will, Brainstorm, Ponder, uh, etc., then you can kind of fill in the rest of your deck with whatever jank you want, and it's still going to be able to compete, at least to some extent. Oh my goodness, this is the dirtiest deck. This is a Narset wheel deck opponent. Opponent. I'm ashamed. Oh. Well, yeah, we're we're in serious trouble. Dirty, oh dirty Jankamout strategies. I hope that Wizards gets the message that if you're gonna print stacks cards, they gotta be symmetrical. It really drives me insane. Durhulk, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, the problem is we just lose a game this turn, which is really unfortunate, I would say. Well, Dread Presence. Because, yeah, now our opponent gets to Narset Wheel. And that's that. Uh, do I listen to the Pixies? Yeah, I uh, I don't listen to them a ton, but yeah, I do like the Pixies. I uh, I respect the pri the Pixies for their. Well, we got one turn to draw an answer to Narset, I guess. Opponent takes down. Well, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, I will never understand why... Yeah, we'll, we'll do one more. Uh, I'll never understand why Wizards decided to start pruning asymmetrical hate cards. Uh, it really, it really kind of blows my mind. I feel like Wizards... Wizards game design is a constant... A constant process of learning things and then forgetting the things that they learned. <laughs> Symmetrical hate was too hated. I mean, I feel like if they printed Thalia today, it would be like whenever your opponent casts a non-creature spell, uh, or whenever your opponent casts, yeah, whenever your opponent casts a non-creature spell. I, I just I don't really understand what what happened in their mind, other than like wizards thinking that like we can't have drawbacks, basically. What what was the last card they had a drawback? Like when when was the last one that was not just all upside? I'm not even being salty. Like I'm actually like honestly wondering. Egon. Okay, I guess that's kind of a I guess that's kind of a drawback. Archon. Archon is symmetrical at least. Which I think that that is the should be the the formatting for <laughs> what's the what's the drawback of Hullbreacher? <laughs> Isn't Hullbreacher asymmetrical? It only hits on your opponents. I just don't understand what I, I'm just curious what changed like philosophically as far as card design. Because, like, if you go back to Blood Moons or Trinospheres or Smokestacks or any of those type of cards, they're all, uh, they're all cards that impact all players. So, uh, I'm just curious, like, what, yeah, Braids, but now it seems like they're usually one-sided. And I'm just curious, like, what, oh, Wow. Is this Grixis Goblins? Oh, it's a God Pharaoh's gift deck. I see. I see, I see. Hmm. Well. Dryad doesn't do much. Let's well, Maze Mind's Tome. Play the land. Ooh, we don't have Graveyard Hate, do we? Oh, ooh. 
<laughs> I don't know though. I feel like magic has get has gotten more and more complex recently though. So I don't know if I would say it's a complexity issue because like mutate, mutate is an incredibly complex mechanic, and like just the number of words on cards are like higher than they've ever been. So I don't feel like. So I don't feel like it's a complexity thing. Because it sucks to play under your own sphere, so just make it awful for your opponent. Well, like, let's say, do you think if they printed Trinisphere today, would it only impact your opponent? Or, like, Blood Moon? Are, are we going to get one-sided Blood Moons? <laughs> Where it's just like, oh, your opponent's not basics or, or mountains, but you get to play... Triomes and Shocklands. Interesting. Huh. I guess I just am used to feel bad magic, <laughs> if that makes sense. And, uh, so I'm used to I'm used to feel bad magic. But maybe if you just started playing with Arena, maybe anything that that has a drawback is just a, a non-starter. Hmm. Oh, Fabled Passage. Crack Fabled Passage. Grab a Swamp. Dryad of the Ills and Grove. Can we find a Citadel? Uh, do you have the Combat Celebrant? Would love to see Godfarer's Gift Combat Celebrant deck in Historic. Ooh. We have played it in the past, but we haven't played it... We haven't played it, uh... Super recently. When you visit, I think my cat is going to recognize you. She sits on my lap and watches your face while you stream. Oh, what's uh, what's the cat's name, Donos? Tell her, tell her hello. And I, I look forward to meeting her at some point. Hmm. Well. Yeah, I guess we better binding that. Binding the gate to the afterlife. Godfrey's gift coming back seems bad for us. Play a land on green. All right. Play some defense. Pray for a citadel. Pray for a citadel. Pray for a citadel. That's what we need. That's what we want. Uh, I think we're going to have to wait and do Sawtusk on a future day because this deck was fun and pretty competitive and everyone voted to keep playing it so sawdust is still on the list but it'll probably be on the on the future list she belongs on r slash cats who yell most talkative cat i've ever met <laughs> i didn't say that paper magic was dead or dying did i i think that uh i think that we we're focused on like MTD finance implications. And I think that from that perspective, it's not that it's dead or dying. It's that I don't think 60 card tournament formats are really driving card prices anymore. Like a few years ago, that was the biggest thing. Like, if you were interested in card prices, you would wait for a pro tour and try to figure out like what decks pro teams were playing. And then whoever spiked a top eight at a pro tour, the cards in the deck would like double in price. And that was like MTD finance or whatever. But now it's all about commander. So I don't think that's magic dying. It's just magic evolving or changing. Like that's how I see it. Like I think that paper magic is going to become more and more and more about about commander and we're gonna see well, let's just draw we could hit oh actually let's play azusa but i think that paper magic is going to be more and more about commander and tournament magic is going to remain mostly on on arena and on magic online not that we won't see some paper magic but i think that's like the general trend i would say is that's where we're where we're heading. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like there are upsides to having your PTQs or whatever the equivalent is be 
on arena where you can play in your underwear compared to having to drive, you know, six hours or whatever. So there, I think there are upsides to, to the more digitally focused system. And I, it's not that I think those things are going to fail to exist altogether. Well, hmm, play dread presence. So yeah, I don't think those things are going to cease to exist. Like I think there will be LGSs that are doing, uh, doing tournaments and stuff. I think Star City Games will probably have their tour again, but I don't think it's going to go back to the days where Magic was primarily about GPs being huge tournaments with five thousand people playing standard, and then. And then also about, you know, pro tours and paper. Like, I think we've just moved past that era for the most part. And the, it, the game has just changed and evolved. And the big events are going to be like, oh, oh. And the big events are going to be essentially conventions where you can do a whole bunch of stuff and play Magic. Well, I guess we have to kill that. And I don't think that's a I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, let's just play floor. Ooh, ooh, that's another one. That's another dread presence. Play it. All right, can we hit some lands before we run out of life? There's one. Overgrown tomb. How many land drops do we have left? One. Zero. All right, tapped. Shoot down Meyer, try in. Shoot down Champion of Wits. Dread Presence. Hit our opponent. And, yeah, whatever. Hit it, hit it. Down to 18. Blood Chief's Thirst. Get rid of the Firebrand. Oh, when the deck goes off, it goes off. Oh, let me see. Uh, let me see Ponzu. Go tagging. Ooh. Ponzu has a... I like, a, I like her coloring. <laughs> well, I'm glad Ponzu enjoys the stream. You can only free to play uh, on arena reasonably if you draft like crazy. I mean, arena economy does have its uh, its own set of issues. Cling to dust seems helpful. Assassin's trophy, and maybe that's it. I guess I could see. Hmm. Is Blood Chief's Thirst worth it? I yeah, will keep two. Like, Thossies might be okay. We don't have that much graveyard hate. Eh. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. I mean, so the thing is, I think you have to want to play limited. I think that's, that's kind of the the issue I have with the oh like arena's cheap if you draft what makes magic awesome is it's a whole bunch of different games to a whole bunch of different people uh and and I think people gotta be able to play the way they enjoy so I feel like having play hours and hours of limited being a prereq to free to play playing uh arena not necessarily a good thing overall at least that's my feeling on it Yeah, free to play uh, fish was not very popular. <laughs> that was that was basically the reason that it went away. It didn't seem like like upgrading your intro decks, even though that's something that seems really relevant to players. Apparently, it's not something that the goldfish audience really wants to watch. At least it wasn't when we tried it. A couple of years ago, when Crimbrid free to play fish, 
And that's also kept me... I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, and I think part of it is, like, the Goldfish audience compared to arena players in general, I'm sure there is someone who could make a... who could make that series, essentially, and have it be really sweet and really popular. Like, I think that's definitely a thing that that could happen. But Goldfish YouTube has been around for a while, it's mostly about, like, janky constructed decks. Uh, that's kind of, like, maybe the main theme. So so I feel like it's just an awkward fit, maybe, for our audience. People want to watch powerful decks and complain about the cost, not decent cheap decks. Uh, yeah, I think that's true to some extent. Although, I mean, people like budget magic for the most part, I think. At least traditionally. I don't play a floral Edrin. Castle Lock Wayne. I mean, I feel like we're in okay shape. Next turn, we can Dread Presence and get a Swamp to kill something. about it goes attacking no blocks and we have multiple answers to god pharaoh's gift if we can get the timing right oh gonna kill it okay sure hmm so whatever we do is gonna die Well, I guess Dryad doesn't. Let's play Dryad. That gets around a braid, and it gets around the gate. My first Goldfish video I watched was getting into MTGO budget red deck video. Ooh, yeah, that was that was a uh, wow. Th I want to say 2018, 2017. Budget Magic means something completely different on Arena. In paper, it's sort of janky trash rare, super cheap, but on Arena, budget means nothing but commons and uncommons. Yeah, Arena has definitely hurt Budget Magic a lot, because the thing is, there's just not that many decks that are all commons and uncommons that, that are good enough that you can, uh, can make videos out of them really you can build a lot of decks around janky rares that's that's pretty pretty practical to build a ton of decks around janky rares on the other end building them around only commons and uncommons just really limits the number of decks you can build you can make a few of them but there's no way you can make anywhere near a weekly series, I don't think, of decks that are, like, at least somewhat functional and, uh, and enjoyable, but, uh, but still stick to that budget. I'm hoping that Paper Magic returning will, will have a positive impact, maybe. That's some of the feedback I've gotten from people is like, well, Budget Magic, I used to watch it a lot. I don't like, uh, I haven't watched it as much recently, but once my LGS is open and I can go in, like, you know, play modern at my LGS, then I definitely will be interested in, in, uh, in budget magic decks again, or same for standard to some extent. So I think, I think budget magic is somewhat dependent on, on, uh, on the paper world. So hopefully it'll be a good thing in the long run. Let's play Oracle. These negates are not looking too good for our opponent. We've been able to play around them pretty easily. Not very good at hitting lands, but... Alright, pass the turn. About it. Well, I mean, I think Paper is returning soon. Yeah, if they had dusting or trading or something along those lines on Arena, that would make it way easier to make more traditional... More traditional budget decks. Well, Dread Presence. Shootdown Combat Celebrate. Floral Hedrid. Hitch ya. 
Azusa. Go attacking. Down to 10. And we're going to get the win. And we're going to close it out on a high note. <laughs> An opponent scoops it up. Oh, Cardboard Live says it's on. I assume that it was working. Oh. Well, I have to say, this deck worked better than I expected. We ended up going 5-3 and three with Bolus' Citadel, and it actually felt like a fairly competitive deck. It is dependent on drawing Bolus' Citadel itself, but the deck actually felt really sweet, and it is a blast to play. Like, the combos are absolutely spectacular. Can we have a couple of escape shifts in the deck? Uh, I mean, you could for fun. Um, yeah, to drag it a whole bunch of lands at once. That'd be kind of cute. So I feel like it. I feel like it felt pretty good overall. Yes, you can do the explorer package if you want to. I think it is strong and it leads to some good loops. The thing is, I feel like that's kind of a almost an entirely different deck because you're gonna have to take out a lot of cards. You're gonna want probably you need Wild Growth Walker. So you need four Wild Growth Walkers, four Branch Walkers, four Jade Lights, uh, and four Seeker Squires at a minimum. So that's 16 cards to take out, which means I think if you're going that direction, you're probably cutting like all the Dryads, all the extra land drop stuff, uh, probably the Maze Mind Stones, probably the Explorers. So I feel like that is a very good way to uh, uh, build this deck, or another good way to build the deck. But I think it is almost like in a different archetype. Like, Explore Citadel versus Extra Land Drop Citadel. But I would definitely recommend it if uh, if you want to mess around and have some fun. Yeah, Vito could be cool in the deck, too. We might need more life gain, because we don't really have life gain outside of Dread Presence and, like, a single Radiant Fountain, for the most part. And I guess Maze Mind Stone if you ultimate it. So we might need more life gain, but Vito could be there, uh, very sweet in that as well. Yeah, Wish Claw could be decent. Grim Tutor could be fine as well. Although it's a lot of life if it's on the top of your deck with Bolas' Citadel. So I might go with Wish Claw if I had to choose between the two. And just, like, not activate it until I'm about to uh, to Citadel. But, yeah, Gary, Gary could be sweet. We don't have any black mana symbols, though. Really, we have Dread Presence. And that's the only... And then Citadel itself. So we don't have a ton of black mana symbols. But the life gain is good. You could play other life gain stuff. Could be good in the deck. Um... Essentially anything. Essentially anything that gains a chunk of life. Plain white celebration is a uh, is sweet. What is what is the three mana spell? I almost wonder. Yeah, Pulse of Marasa. Return creature land to its owner's hand, so it can't get back a citadel. But it also gains six life. Maybe that's better than Balagad recovery. I got like a beard here in my mouth. I think. <laughs> Gonna, gonna choke to death on a beard here on stream. What a way to go. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's Bulls of Citadel. I would recommend it. If you got the cards for it, throw it together, play some games. It's really fun, and it does really sweet things. So, uh, yeah, Thrag Tusk is another cool addition, because that's, like, mana neutral. And that's a whole other way you could build the deck. We saw... We saw Palaka Worm originally in the sideboard. Instead of trying to, like, combo off, you could play... I'm playing big things for free. Like, Palaka Worm, 7, but you gain back 7. Thrag Tusk, 5, but you gain back 5. Uh, Gray Merchant. Uh, Gary. Eh, I guess uh, that has not been coded into Arena yet. Oh, we're not on Black, I see. Uh, Gray Merchant gains back 5, cause 5. So you could just play, like free big free spell citadel which would be interesting as well but oh on that note everyone i believe that that brings us to the end of our stream for today so next stream is going to be fun next stream it, and we'll find someone uh someone sweet to raid here or tano's if you have someone you'd like to raid feel free to uh to raid away so um next stream is thursday thursday is spoiler starting day for Strixhaven, big kickoff day for spoilers. So, uh, so yes, uh, it'll be a fun stream. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know what we're playing, but we will figure it out. So, uh, reminders on the way out the door. Replay YouTube. If I could type it, that's where you find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. Tons of stuff going up on there. Collecting Codring and Botter tomorrow. And one more reminder that our sponsor tonight is. 
Card Kingdom. And if you need some magic cards from Time Spyro Remastered or any place else, you get them at CardKingdom.com. Even get a free scoop soldier sticker. Just let them know you want one, then we'll hook you up. Most importantly, thank you to all of you. You all are amazing and awesome and spectacular. And I love each and every one of you. So have an amazing Tuesday night. Have an amazing Wednesday, since there's no stream. I'll see you on Thursday to talk Strixhaven spoilers, play some more jank, have some more fun. So until then, have a great week, everyone. Thanks again for being so awesome. And yeah, see you on Thursday.